All right, so this video is for uh, the Windows users out there who has Windows Home Edition, not Windows Professional or Enterprise Express. So there has this software, Docker provides this software called Docker Desktop for Windows. Um, and it works great if you have the Professional Edition or Enterprise Edition. Uh, but if you have the Home Edition, so let me go here and show you that I do have the Home Edition. I scroll down, you'll see I'm running Windows 10 Home Edition, uh, 1903 version. So let me download uh, des 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 Docker Desktop for Windows and let you see what that install looks like. So I have it right here, Docker for Windows Installer. And we double click on it, hit yes. It's gonna start downloading packages and it's gonna tell you that install failed Due to a prerequisite, uh, you don't you don't have Windows Pro or Enterprise Edition uh, to run. So it doesn't mean that you can't run Docker on Windows. Uh, it just means you have to take a take a different approach to get it to work. Um, if you go over to the documentation, it says requires ten professional enterprise uh, get a previous version of Docker uh, toolbox. This is a product that they provide uh, before they release Docker Desktop for Windows. And I've been playing with it and it looks like it still works really well if you have a home edition. So I found this guide online to kind of help walk through. Um, it's by Mark uh, Cameron. And I went through and it was pretty helpful. It's called uh, Get Windows for Home Edition. And the one, one thing to keep in mind if you run any version of virtualization is you have to make sure that way back at the BIOS level, you have virtualization enabled on your C CPU. And this is where your machine first posts up at BIOS. If you go into it, you can confirm uh, if you have it enabled in the settings of your processor. Uh, the wording varies on different BIOSes, but you'll see something to the effect of virtualization, uh, VT, um, in the CPU area of your BIOS. So just confirm that's there. Uh, the next thing you want to check is there's a features area that you want to make sure is turned off in your Windows features. It's the hypervisor platform, which is provided by Microsoft for virtualization. You got to make sure that's turned off. So the way to get to that is you just go to control panel and you can type programs and then click on program and features. And then if you click on the setting right here that says Windows features on or off, you can scroll through here and we get to the W's, you can see Windows hypervisor platform, make sure that check box is off. Do not have that checked um, for this to work for you. So make sure that's off. All right. So now we need to confirm that our, uh, we need to download the Docker toolbox, uh, which is this tab right here. And we'll do that in a second. And then there's another thing on here that you need to make sure is you want to have VirtualBox installed in your machine. So look up VirtualBox. If you go to this what URL, www.virtualbox.org, you can get to this site and you can download VirtualBox. So let me install VirtualBox real quick. So you click download, you'll get the uh, options for your operating system. Uh, you can choose Windows. Uh, uh, IOX and various Linux distros, but you particularly need to follow this this um, video for for the Windows users out there. Um, so you put VirtualBox in your machine. So once you click on that uh, on Windows, it'll start downloading, and then you have the installer which is right here, and I'm going to install it on my machine. So VirtualBox 6.0.6. .6. So I'm double clicking, uh, hit next. Nothing really need to change here. Uh, leave all the settings, the, the defaults, the way they're set up. Those will all work great for you. Hit next. Um, oh, this looks good as well. Next. This is letting you know that you may use, you may lose some networking ability, uh, inter, uh, uh, functionality during the install process, um, but to continue anyway. And then you install. Um, hit yes to give permission. I let virtual box get installed in your machine. Uh, you may see some pop-ups. Just always say install. Don't hit 
don't install. Make sure you hit leave the check on Always Trust Oracle Corporation. Uh, this is for security of your operating system and hit install. All right, now it says start Oracle um, after installation. That's okay. And then you'll see here, this is what VirtualBox looks like on your machine. So you can create as many VMs you want, um, any operating system you can think of uh, other than um, really anything you can think of, you can install as a virtual machine. But um, VMware tool, Toolbox uses VirtualBox under the hood. So just make sure you have this installed and that's one less thing you have to worry about uh, doing the uh, ins installation of virtual tools. So I'm going to close that for now. Then we get that done. Next up, you'll see uh, VirtualBox. So if you go here, back to the guide, you can click on the link in this article and it will redirect you to um, the link uh, for VirtualBox. But the URL for it is um, docs docker.com forward slash toolbox forward slash toolbox underscore install windows uh, you can also get it, get it if you cl click on this um, screen that says docker desktop for windows and it's a little for previous versions click here if you click it you'll, it'll also get you to the overview screen which will have you here and then you just click on um, there's a button down you scroll down there's a get docker toolbox for windows and that will, that will get you to the same page that I'm on um, that would download this right here would actually download if you look down here it's downloading the docker toolbox.exe which is exactly what you want and then once you have that since I already have, have it downloaded uh, you'll see here I have it right here docker toolbox so let's install that so over here um, you can help them send some feedback to them if you want. It's up to you. Uh, you'll have uh, C programs installed next. Now this screen you can, um, I would recommend is take this check off of VirtualBox. We've already installed the latest release from Oracle around VirtualBox. So you really don't need to um, rely on this insta installation uh, to deal with installing anything related to VirtualBox. It would just work. Just leave that check off. You definitely want Docker Compose. Uh, is a wrapper around Docker to give you some additional amazing functionality. Um, Chimatic is more for the, the GUI lovers out there. It'll give you like a GUI way to interact with your images and containers. And of course, Get is awesome. It is the underlying uh, source control um, for uh, um, any, all the source uh, operating systems, but it also is has some plumbing used within Docker um, to work as well. So just make sure you leave that check there, uh, Chimatic and Docker Compose, leave all those checks on. VirtualBox, you can uncheck that because we've already installed it earlier. And then here, leave all these on, don't touch anything, let that go, and then install. All right, so then you'll get to this screen, hit finish, and then I'll close out some stuff. You'll get two shortcuts. There'll be on your desktop, one for Docker Quick Start Terminal, the other one's for Kitematic if you decide to use it. So I'm gonna close all this stuff, close all that out. So now we're back to the desktop. You see, I still have Oracle VM VirtualBox. You don't have to open this for Docker to work. It will use it under the hood. So you ain't got to worry about that. So I'm closing that out. Uh, but you see, I have Kitematic. You can just use this if you want. I won't uh, go into that in this video um, because I really encourage you to use the CLI versus uh, GUI for Docker. And then the other thing is uh, the Docker Quick Start Terminal. You definitely need this. But for good measure, I'm going to do a quick reboot and then uh, we will to make sure everything's good to go. And then we'll be right back. All right. So now we're all back logged in. You'll notice we have the same links here. Oracle, it, uh, if you want to create your own additional VMs, you got Kitematic, which we're not going to discuss. And then you got this link called Docker Quick Start Terminal. This really gets everything up and running. So you want to double click on that and you'll get this terminal window and the initial time that you run this you'll get all type of setup and initialization uh, to get your your VM your, your docker machine running using uh, boot to docker in the background uh, your virtual box is going to get set up now this is where it's interacting with uh, virtual box it's getting it all spun up doing all the networking stuff creating keys all the cool stuff that needs to happen now doing this process you may get a few prompts do you want to allow I always always hit yes and then just let this um, terminal get everything set up for you. Say yes. 
All right, when when all goes well, you'll be sitting at this awesome little Docker uh, icon. Docker's configured with a default IP address, and then you'll have your, your interactive shell. Now, cool thing is if you hit F11, you can go full screen, you can roll your mouse to um, like hold your control and roll your mouse wheel if you want to kind of zoom in, so that's kind of cool, right? Uh, but just to kind of make sure everything's good to go, just type Docker version. That will spit out your client and, uh, and your, your daemon that's running in the background. You'll notice that it is running a VM of Linux in the background, uh, running my daemon. And then it is uh, talking to your client, um, which is on your Windows machine, for, for Docker. So that's exactly what you need. We can always clear things. Um, hold up, let me scroll down here. You don't really need clear. I guess you can kind of scroll things out of sight. But... Uh, there's two things you want to make sure is working docker images to see if you have any images you can do docker process to see if any processes are running um, the quick hello world will confirm everything's working that you can pull down images you can run them so if I do docker um, pull and then do hello world hello dash world that will pull the image down for me uh, so now if I do docker images you'll see I have an image for hello world uh, if I want to run it I can do docker run hello world and all things docker are good to go so you know this is really i just keep i'm scrolling my wheel to kind of get things out of sight right so the next thing i could do is let's say i want to do target uh my sql i could do docker pull my sql uh pull and it will go off and pull images down from um the docker hub registry and uh this image will come down all right, once that image is down, I can just, the other thing you want to make sure you, that's working, I think doing the tools uh, installer, you should also have Docker Compose. So if you hit Docker Compose, you should see all of your, uh, all, the, all the commands and the usage of Docker Compose, which means you're good to go. And then you can start creating YAML files uh, around the various uh, images and create some services and you'll be all online. Last but not least, um, even with this screen running, you can always, always go to your command prompt. I can do run as administrator. And you see here side by side, I got the, the, the Windows for, um, the Git for Windows screen up over here, but I can also go to a plain old just command prompt in Windows and still do Docker and everything will still work. Docker images, uh, Docker uh, PS. So any commands will still work. Docker Compose should work as well. And I got the commands there. So you're you're hooked in from via either uh, command prompt and or the uh, get for Windows prompt. You can interact with Docker. The other thing too, if you exit and you need to uh, get back in, I can always close these out. Same thing. I can do a command prompt. If you ever, for whatever reason, are interacting with Docker and things don't seem to be working correctly, just reinitialize by clicking on your Docker Quick Start Terminal, and that would this will make sure things running and online for you, um, and, and related to your your Docker. Last but not least, go to your Task Manager. If you're having any issues, just confirm more details, performance, and click on CPU. You want to make sure, like for now, for me, this is a virtualized, a virtual machine, so it's going to show virtual processors. But for you, you want to make sure this says virtualization enabled. Um, if we go back to that that guide that was on here, all right. So I found the image I was talking about. If you go to uh, DockerDots.com toolbox, it's, it's in the install for Windows. Uh, it looks at the top. It looks like. Uh, install Docker toolbox for Windows, but just the, the quick eyeball check stuff so you won't have no gotchas when you're running it. Just make sure your virtualization says enabled. So once again, if I go to my task manager uh, performance and click on CPU, um, my my machine is a VM, so it's going to say virtual processors and virtual machines, yes. But in, on a physical host machine that's virtualization enabled, it should just have one entry showing all your logical processors and then have one that says virtualization true, uh, enabled. If it's so some reason say virtual, virtualization uh, not enabled or not on or whatever the status is, you need to go to your BIOS and uh, enable it. Whichever, just look it up, Google the model of your, and the vendor 
on the manufacturer and the model number of your motherboard and look at the BIOS and it, it should have screenshots or in your manual of how to enable virtualization. But once you do that, I mean, this video you can follow uh, to the letter and it will get you up and running. Um, for some of my advanced users, um, if you ever get into a situation where um, you're getting, you're running Docker commands and it says like unable to communicate with your unable to we communicate or function or anything like that. Um, just want to make you aware an F11 and uh, hold control, you can zoom in. Uh, just make you aware you can, under the hood, you have a command called Docker Machine. And in there um, will allow you to do everything related to your, your, your VM that's running your daemon um, for Docker. Remember how I told you when you run Docker, uh, you have two things. So if you look at Docker version, you have a client, which is here, and then you have the version information about your server. And you notice that this is Linux, not Windows. That's because your VM uh, or your daemon is being managed and run in a VM uh, behind the scenes. The, the, in order to get interact with them, you have this concept of Docker machine. And then there, you have some subcommands of what's active, configuration, create, environment variables and blah 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 everything going down so when you ran initially ran that quick start uh, icon that's on your desktop it made it use this thing and it initialized and got everything set up for you to get up and running now if you do docker machine ls which is this command right here uh, and hit enter it should show you all your running uh, dockers machines all right, so you'll notice here, uh, of course they call it default. It shows it is active. The driver is VirtualBox. Uh, it doesn't have to be VirtualBox. With, with this, some configuration, you can use other um, virtualization software. Uh, I highly recommend VirtualBox because it's free and it runs on everything and it's, and it's the, by default uh, the way it works. Um, you notice it stays running. So you ever do a Docker machine LS and you notice that it does not, it's not running, uh, it doesn't have a uh, a URL TCP port information, then that's your that's your issue. You're gonna to have to either like, you see there's various statuses here, stop and start, uh, SSH, restart, provision, all these different things. Um, so just, if you run into any trouble, for Docker machines where you wanna look, um, take a look at your machines, make sure they're online, and troubleshoot from there to get your, your Docker back up and running. Because the daemon's not working, you're not gonna be in interact with um, the Docker services on your machine. Now you can repoint your Docker client to a different machine running Docker. That that can work uh, via a environment variable Docker host. But for everything on your particular machine, you want to focus on the Docker machine command and and just make sure you always get uh, it's running and everything is good. All right. Um, let me know if you need anything else.